I want you to imagine, just imagine for a second that you are a, an actual member, you live in Thessalonica. You are a Thessalonian 2,000 years ago. You're sitting here, Paul is over here, maybe shipwrecked, maybe on a ship, maybe in prison. Who knows, but he's pinning a letter or having Timothy and Sylvanius or whoever write it, okay? And he's writing this letter. And you know that Paul is a man of Jesus, a man of God back then. And he sends you a letter. Okay, so you are a Thessalonian 2,000 years ago. And Paul says, me and Timotheus and Sylvanius or himself, I don't remember. He said, to the Thessalonians. And he says, we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together unto him. That means this is what he's talking about. And then he goes to them and he says, How say some of you that there's no resurrection of the dead? He said, If there's no resurrection of the dead, then Jesus is not ascended. Our preaching is in vain. Your faith is in vain. He said, uh, And those that are dead have no hope. The reason that he said this to them, I'm going to tell you the rest of it too, but the reason that he said this to them is because they were thinking that you had to make it until the return of Christ. That you had to still be alive, or you were lost. That there was no resurrection. That God would, and it's how religious people get stuff in their minds, you know. They heard, whoever endures to the end shall be saved. So they're thinking, well, if Jesus doesn't keep us alive until his return, then. But he said, let me tell you something, brethren. Basically says, I assure you. He says, we, which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. Talking to them, you are a Thessalonian, and he says, hey guys, let me talk to you about the coming of the Lord. Some of your brothers are already dead, they're already asleep. You guys don't believe that they're going to come? He says, we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord will not prevent them which are asleep. Because the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And then after this, after this time, after Jesus' reign, then the rest of them and the coming of the Lord will rise with him. You don't think he was saying that? Because then he reiterates it and assures them at the end and says, Finally, brethren, he prays that God preserves their whole bodies, soul, and spirit unto the coming of the Lord. In other words, he said, I hope that you don't die before the coming of the Lord, but if you do, you still have hope. You can still be resurrected. Their bodies were preserved unto the coming of the Lord. Okay, it was written to them. Imagine you're sitting there. Paul didn't send it, and you sit there and read it and go, Oh, okay, so we're all just going to die, and this is actually written for people 2,000 years from now. That's not what it was. He was telling them that some of them would still be alive unto the coming of the Lord. You, we also don't have this writing about the man of sin. But he talks to the Thessalonians about the man of sin, and he says, Whenever I was with you, I told you these things. So he told them things that we don't even know what he said, because it wasn't to us. He said, I told you whenever I was with you what withheld until the man of sin could be revealed, that shall sit in the temple of God and be destroyed with the brightness of Jesus' coming and the word of his mouth, right? They knew what withheld until he came, because it was written to them. Do you see what I'm saying? This is the most simple thing in the world, but because of doctrine, people can't see it wasn't written to us. It was written to the Thessalonians. There is no man of sin today. Paul told them, mouth to mouth, before he even wrote this letter, what would happen before the man of sin came, because that was important to them. Just like today, people say, the book of Revelation hasn't happened yet, and the tribulation hasn't happened yet. John said in the book of Revelation, he said, Hi, my name's John, by the way. I'm your brother and companion in the tribulation, and I was exiled to Patmos for it. I'm in tribulation with you. In the tribulation. It already happened. The things in the Bible are not written to us, and I've got plenty of videos explaining why it's so good for us that Christianity ended and it's over. That was to the Thessalonians, not to us. Christianity ended in 70 AD.